Another way of collecting our data that is not so common anymore, but is still used in some applications, is called diffuse reflectance, or sometimes just called drifts. In drift spectroscopy, the sample is placed into a sample cup, which I enlarge here so that we can see it. That sample cup contains a powder, which we have granulated to a fine particulate. So within this, there are individual particles. And when we grind it up, we grind up both the sample and usually potassium bromide powder. Now, in order to get a good drift signal, you're going to want the sample to be around 10% or maybe even less of the sample. One mistake people make is they think, well, a little bit of sample must be good, so more must be better. It isn't because the sample will become totally absorbing. So you want the sample, whatever the analyte you're analyzing may be, to be not the main constituent. It's KBR powder. Sometimes we use diamond powder for various reasons, but KBR is easily the most common. Now what happens here is the infrared beam is directed down onto the sample. As it does that, if you imagine a particle here, and I'm drawing in red a KBR particle, then the IR beam may bounce off what's called specularly, which means the angle is the same. So this is specular reflection. We don't want that. We're talking about the diffuse reflection. What happens in diffuse reflection is that the IR beam kind of migrates around inside the sample and then eventually comes back out. And while it's bouncing around, it's hitting these particles of KBR and occasionally passing through a particle of the sample. And as it's doing that, it's storing up, so to speak, the absorbance of the sample. And then that diffusely reflected light, which comes back out, is actually carrying the signal. And it's this diffuse light, which is then gathered by a mirror, what we call a compound parabolic collector, or a CPC. That mirror collects that light and directs it onto the detector. So the key points here, the sample is around 10% of the sample, of, of the total amount of powder you put in here. The potassium bromide is a diluent. It's there to allow the light to reflect freely around. Too much sample, too strong absorption, bad signals. So it's simple to prepare. You just grind it up. The particles have to be fairly fine. And we will look at that when we look at this over in the lab. And then it's very straightforward to run these. You should get clean samples. Primarily now this is used in some pharmaceutical applications where there were uh, standard operating procedures, SOPs, which have been devised a, long, a while back that specifically called out drifts as the analytical method. There are also times when it just it works better than other methods for certain kinds of samples, uh, especially when you get into the near-infrared. Uh, diffuse reflectance is very common in near-infrared samples. So that's a little bit about drifts. Now let's go have a look.